Welcome back to another video. Now I'm going through old footage. So this footage is probably about a year old, but I'm getting it edited and brought out so that I can start making new videos. In this video, we're going to be making three bowls as you saw from the thumbnail, but no, I'm not going to throw all three because I forgot to record one of them. So I throw two of them. Now let's start the process with wedging. In wedging, we're folding the clay in on itself, just like you would with pizza dough. What that does is it gets rid of all the air bubbles and it makes the clay smooth because sometimes the clay doesn't dry perfectly smooth and if it's not smooth while you're throwing, everything's going to be off. I'm going to take the main piece of clay and slice it into three individual ones. That's going to be each individual bowl. Now I do re-wedge it because it's better to make sure that there are no air pockets now rather than once you've started throwing. Better to be safe than sorry. Now it's time to get onto the wedging. I'm going to take the clay, put it into a little ball, and throw it against the bat. Then I'm going to push the clay into the bat and make sure that it's not going to slide around. You want it to be firmly pressed against. Now that it's pressed against, I do what's called coning. And when I cone it, it's essentially wedging the clay again, uh, but on the bat. It makes it so the clay is nice and smooth, centered, gets rid of the air bubbles, and makes it homogenous. I'm going to do this a couple times, and then I'm going to do what's called opening. In the opening stage, you want to make sure you have a nice centered puck. If it's not centered, then you're just setting yourself up for failure when you throw. Now that I'm opening it, I'm going to take the sponge and push it against the center. This slowly starts to push the clay outwards and create a really small hole like a donut. Once you have the donut made, you can start pulling out the walls, which you'll see here pretty soon. When pulling up the walls, I'll take my left hand and put it inside the pot, or the bowl, or whatever you're making, and then my right hand with a sponge on the outside. I'll brace my hands together and squeeze both my wrists in towards the clay and pulling up slowly. This forces the clay to stretch outwards and pull up. I'll do this a numerous amount of times and then slowly shape the bowl out into whatever height, width that I want. Bowls are really, really simple. All you have to do is cone the clay up and down, open it, and start pulling up the walls. Now that I have the walls pulled out, all I have to do is use a red rubber kidney, it could be a wooden tool, to just smoothen out the inside. That's it. So, as you see right here, I'm just smoothing out the inside, reshaping it a little bit, and then I'm gonna be done. Simple. One other thing that I can do is I can take a sponge and smoothen out the rim of the bowl. Keep in mind you don't want the rim to be too thin or too thick because it's going to either feel weird or it's going to break really easily. Once it's all smoothened out, I can take this little wire and slice the bowl off. Now that you've already seen the first bowl explained, I'm just going to let you watch the second bowl be made in a sped up time.
I have now let the bowls dry for about a day. It can take a little bit more, a little bit less. What you're trying to do is you want it in a state called leather hard. If it's completely dry to where there's no moisture in it, you're not going to be able to trim the bowl and finish it off. And if it's too wet, the trimming process is just going to destroy the bowl. Now, to trim the bowl, I'm going to take the bowl and put it upside down and do what's called tap centering. With tap centering, you're just waiting for the bowl to come closer to your hand and then you're going to hit it more towards the center. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it's pretty easy. Once it's down and centered, I'm going to fasten the bowl down to the bat, and the bat, again, is that blue disc bat, the clay sits under, uh, but I'm going to fasten it down with more clay. Once it's fastened down, I can use what this tool does in my hand to start shaving off layers of clay. This gets rid of any imperfections, and sometimes when the bowl dries, it'll uh, dry unevenly, and that's why you see the bottom of the bowl moving so much, it's because it kind of tilted as it was drying overnight. So I'm going to start with the outside of the bowl, shave down, and then I'm going to remove these clay pieces off of the bowl, trim the edges more, and then finish up the base. Um, by the end of this, you're going to see that the, the bottom is completely still. Uh, once I'm done with that, I can flip it over, shave the inside if I really want to, uh, and then I'm going to carve my initials, and that'll be the end of trimming the first bowl. Uh, and then for the second bowl, I'm just going, or for the second and the third bowl, I'm just going to let you watch both of them in uh, four times speed. As you can see, there really is not much to do when making bowls. The trimming is really easy, I just did it three times to make a set. Um, if you want to see the finished product, I'm going to make a video here shortly uh, that shows the progress of all of my bowls and it will show uh, most of my bowls and other art pieces fully glazed and colored. Um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, consider subscribing if you like more, hopefully I'll be posting more shortly. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.